This is Carl Ackerman, host of Journeys of the Mind. And today, all in Hawaii will shout with glee because we have the magic man of Honolulu, Dr. Brad Kerwin. And uh, Brad, we are so lucky to have you on the show because I know your, your time commitments and everything you do across the state. Uh, but my first question to you is because the show is called Journeys of the Mind. How did you get to Hawaii and, and you, where did you grow up? Now, I know these things, but but uh, our audience does not. That's a really good question. Um, first, I'll get down low enough so that Jay can actually get part of this in. This is how I dress every day when I go to Magic. I wear these exact clothes that you can sort of see right now and you can sort of see the fedora. Um, and I'm going to take off this incredibly hot coat because where I am, it's really, really hot. You're seeing the shirt right now that I wear to most of the places I go to. I got here uh, in um, 1972. I went to UCLA and then I came here and uh, was not doing magic yet, but I got all three of my degrees here and started doing magic about 40 years ago. I did not come on scholarship. I got into school uh, as a volleyball player. And that began in the fall of 1972. And yeah, it was great. It was great fun and I really enjoyed it. And uh, I got in mostly because for two reasons, for the people who are local. Uh, my best friend was the captain of the football team and Larry Price. I worked for Larry Price uh, painting rooms and doing the gardening outside of his outside of his office in the quarry. But that's how I got in, and I started playing volleyball and uh, started doing all my stuff in education. So, is it fair to say you were one of those Southern California beach boys? And I, um, isn't there something about your family and surfing too? And and there's something about my my very very dear friend, the other half of the um, the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, who is I'm talking to right now. We were both Southern California beach guys. You from Malibu, and me from Hermosa, and my dad and his brothers were uh, the original members of the Hermosa Beach Surfing Club that won the international title in 1939. And I was very lucky. I wasn't very good. The rest of my family members were really good surfers, but I was like nobody. And and, and before we go on, uh, because you, um, you know, you're married to such a wonderful woman and you have such two wonderful children. Uh, you know, I want to put this in a disturbance of the mind before we get to magic. Can you tell us about your family? Because it is such a wonderful family. Oh, about Linda and, and, and Jason and Adrian? Uh-huh. And, and yeah. this is part of your journey. Uh, yeah, they, they are wonderful. My wife was a uh, a child movie star. Uh, and um, uh, in, uh, first in New York and then starring with Jackie Gleason in movies and was on the Route 66 and stuff. I didn't meet her till. Uh, I came here and she came here. She was 16, but I didn't meet her till she was 21. And uh, very, very lucky. She's a flight attendant and been working for like, she's in her 46th year. She's in Atlanta right now working for Delta. My sons are both wonderful. Went to Punahou School here and they are both brilliant guys. I'm very lucky. The good thing is like you, my children are wonderful and make me very proud like your girls make you proud. Uh, very, very lucky. Very lucky. Now, Dr. Kerwin, I'll just add this: you know, his one of his sons is a professor of economics, married to another professor of economics. With you know that I'm sure that child will have a good economics background. And his other son, you know, has a business where he he travels between, as Dr. Kerwin recently told me, between Italy, Japan, and the United States. What a glorious <laughs> life! Okay, let's get to your magic. So, what? How did you even begin with magic, being you know the volleyball ace that you were? Um, I wish I were a volleyball ace and I were, wish that I were as good as that makes me sound that I played for UH. Uh, but uh, the guys who play volleyball now, I watch them. It's just like they're from outer space. Good. I was only OK. I started doing magic as a way of tutoring kids at Punahou to get their attention. And I realized fairly quickly that magic is a lure for everybody. And magic be, brings out and this is like a phrase we use, brings out the inner child in everybody and focuses it, even if they're adults. It's amazing how it works. And so I would tutor a child, I'd work with them, and I'd show them a magic trick. And I would tell them, I will show you how to do that. Um, one, you've got to take the oath and promise you're not going to give away the secret. And two, you have to work hard on what you're doing right now. And it just 
draws them in. And that's how I started. At, actually, as when I was tutoring at Punahou in the early to mid-1980s. Yeah, and it was great. It was just fun. That's all. Now, tell us about what you're doing now in terms of the Discovery Center, you know, that wonderful place, the Kaka'ako, um, you know, in terms of magic. And also, you were working with the DOE in terms of magic. And so uh, I'd like to hear about both those things. Very, very lucky. Um, again, uh, right now, we work, uh, my company uh, is uh, Honolulu Magic Company, and we work at the Children's Discovery Center uh, year-round during the breaks. So we just finished six weeks of summer school. We'll do a week or so at fall, a couple of weeks in the at Christmas time, a couple of weeks at spring break, and then back at summertime again. Now, that, that's just what we have grown into. And uh, we work with kids there. I, I was invited by, um, originally by um, uh, Leanne uh, Yajima Usher. Um, and she is now, she was my seventh grade student. And, and now she's the president of <laughs> the Discovery Center. Dr. K, would you like to come in and do balloons? And we did balloons. And then she said, would you like to do magic? And we started doing some magic. And... Uh, we set up those classes and it, it's pretty amazing um, because our classes fill the moment they are open by the Discovery Center. What do I mean? Well, for example, last spring, we finished our spring classes and then the first week of April, all of the six weeks for the summer were opened up. We could take up to 40 kids per week. Uh, and that was opened up in April. By the end of that week, all of the classes for the entire summer were full. That's how popular they are, um, and it, it's actually how hard they are to get into because um, uh, we have a lot of people who end up, I'm sorry, being a little bit disappointed, but we try to fit them in in other ways and places. Uh, and it's what's amazing, and I think the thing that stands out the most, Carl, is that at the Discovery Center, well, when we first started teaching, we st first started teaching at Punahou. Okay, we I, I was the director of the summer school, and... We added, but I could add all kinds of cool um, subjects and classes, and we added magic and had one of, had one of the greatest um, magicians in the world, uh, Curtis Cam, as the teacher. And another kid who grew up to be one of the greatest magicians in the world, Dr. Kaino Harbottle, was his assistant. And we only did seventh and eighth graders. And then we added sixth graders because they were begging to get in. This is summer school at Punahou. And then slowly but surely, we worked our way all the way down to fourth graders because kids were begging to get, oh, we can't teach them. They're too young. I'll fast forward. Now at the Discovery Center, we take kids who are four years old and up. And people say, we call it kinder magic. And people, what can you do with a four-year-old, Brad? And I go, I don't know. Have you ever worked with preschoolers and kindergartners? Well, have you, Brad? Well, yeah, I have. I ran kindergarten, quote unquote, for 10 years at Punahou. And I was very lucky. I learned a whole lot. And the kids are locked in so much to whatever you are doing that, that you can get them to do anything. Um, so we work with, like I said, year round breaks, one week camps. We have kids between four years old and 12 years old, all in the same room split into two groups. And so for those of us who teach, it's Little Red Schoolhouse. It's like we're like the old Western schoolhouses where everybody is in the same room at the same time and said, does that work? And I go, no, it doesn't just work. It is the very best way I've ever found to teach. We have, not only don't we have any problems, everybody helps everybody and everybody is included and everybody is individualized for automatically because of the way we put it in and everything is magical. Um, and you asked, I'm sorry, you did ask about, uh, um, public schools. And luckily I met a, a, a wonderful gentleman at Punahou school who asked me if I would be willing to work with him, uh, in a program called Pueo and, uh, still some of the best work I've ever done in my life. Uh, thanks to you, Carl. I appreciate it. Um, Dr. Carl Ackerman, the, um, the director of the Puyo program who started everything, uh, everything up 
in the Pueo program and allowed me to work with kids. And we taught them magic. We taught them magic when they were going into eighth grade. And uh, it was wonderful. And then we went to public schools. You and I went and visited the public schools. And I would do magic for the kids and their counselors, sometimes their principals or vice principals, when you and I went in to meet all of the kids that we, we and they had recruited. And that was real again a real draw, really really fun. Um, uh, the kids all super super enjoyed it. Uh, and then we started going out to the public schools. So we have actually set up programs on campus at Connie Ohio Elementary School um, uh, year round at different times at Kaulu Vela School where we have classes also um, year round and uh, during all the breaks. And so we work with public schools as well, and it's it's very successful. There isn't anybody who doesn't want us to come back. In fact, they make a line. Now, in terms of public schools, uh, I want to just verify that this is true. Um, I know that you went out to Kahalu Elementary School, and um, you know the principal there wanted you to make the kids you know feel good right before they took all these standard tests. Well, not only did you make them feel good, but test scores you know fairly dramatically improved after the kids took magic. And so I wanted you to verify that and just talk about that a bit. Yeah. You know, Carl, that was one of the most magical things for me. The only thing that, and what that was, was we had a regular magic class and uh, we taught all the kids who were uh, in school at the time and during spring break, during spring, spring break. And we just taught all the kids a little bit at a time. And then um, was it Amy who was the principal at that point? It may have been Amy Arakaki, yeah. Uh, she said, uh, Brad, would you come in and could you do like a pep rally for the kids before they go in to take these tests because they're really scared and, you know, we're not doing very well. We'd like to do better. And the only thing I regret is when I did that show, it was in the library that I didn't have it videotaped. That is the best show I have ever done because the kids all knew me. I walked in and as soon they were seated, as soon as I walked in, all the kids i looked i walked out and i went and looked at them all and they all started to laugh the show had not started the kids were laughing so hard and having so much fun and like after every trick we talked about all you got to do is try i'm trying right now sometimes did you guys know i just messed up that trick i went on anyway yeah i had the rope in the wrong place you can do the same thing you can go out there and try your very best and that's all you're going to do are you going to get all the questions right? No, nobody gets all the questions right. Are you going to know what some of the questions even mean? No. You're not going to look at this. Skip that one. Just go on. And so we did some test prep. We got them stoked about what they were doing. They went out and there wasn't a kid. They said the kids weren't scared. You know, they're so scared of these. Like, these. no, that's just a test. They're going to try something and you see how you do. You can look for things to work on and go from there. And... When Amy came back and she just goes, to, she goes, Brad, look at the scores. She goes, this is the beginning of the year. This is our spring test. Will you look at this? And I said, yeah. Be being generally prepared and having somebody tell you, hey, you're really good. You can do this. That makes all the difference in what you are doing. You just go in and you try your very best. And you and I know this as teachers because you and I have both worked with and shared some Students who are really struggling and say, hey, let's try this. Yes, you can do this. No, I can't do it, Dr. K. I can't. Yeah, you can. In fact, a matter of fact, you're going to do all this math homework that you've skipped for the last semester, and you're going to do it over the weekend and bring it and show it to me. Then you're going to go hand it back into that teacher who says that you can't, you can't hand in anything late. She'll take it. She won't. Yes, she will, because you tried. You're going to try. And trying means so much. And with the littlest kids, they automatically try, Carl. They automatically try and they do not get frustrated. It's like, oh, don't you have a lot of kids crying? No. <laughs> do the big kids help the little kids? Yeah. And sometimes the little kids help the big kids. And sometimes they get in their own groups. And sometimes they get just a little pairs. And so, sometimes they say, can we get up now and start showing stuff to each other? It is the best teaching I've ever done in my life. Uh, it works so well. And again, it's the concept of, for the little kids, we call it kinder magic. Because all the things that you want little kids to learn, 
they learn um, just by doing this stuff and this, everything's bite-sized, but all the things you want them to do as a learner, as a human being, uh, as, a, as a partner, as a person who can work by themselves, who can work in a pair, who can form a new pair, who can learn to get into a small group and can work across a group automatically without somebody saying, hey, you should get in another group. You can do that as a teacher, but the kids start to do it themselves because they're giving given very interesting things to do that are bite-sized and fun and interesting, and they always want to come back to it. Always. You don't have some kid who goes, I don't want to go back to magic anymore. We've had one little girl who is just turned five. How is it possible, we counted, she just took magic for the sixth time, the sixth week. <laughs> And we look at how many times have you been here? No, dear, it, this is your sixth time. How many times have you learned how to do the torn and restored rubber band? He goes, I don't know. I like it every time. Can you um, talk about, because I saw you doing this in the Pueyo program, which is still continuing at the, the Clarence T.C. Chang Pueyo program, which still continues at Pudaho School and the Ka'i program, of course, the Alani. Can you talk about how your magic program really affects uh, kids who are troubled. Um, because I watched this and I watched some kids who were, you know, who were really um, other teachers that said were real discipline problems. When they got into magic, there, there didn't seem to be a problem. Yeah, I have two really good stories. One is where uh, uh, one particular child um, was having difficulty, seventh grader, and having difficulty with math and um wasn't paying attention wasn't getting his work done and uh he in fact you know wait hold on this is a child who wasn't even in pueo and it was but it was one of our teachers and our teachers took our teachers took a uh one of our teachers matt took a, and not Matt Nakamura, a different one, Matt Singer, took a deck of cards, went over to this kid and he showed him a trick. And the kid, did, you know, and this kid just wasn't doing anything. He wasn't paying any attention. He was rude and kind of snotty. Um, but a good kid underneath it all. And the, the kid said, that's really good. Will you show me how to do that? And he goes, uh, maybe, but you got to do your work. That kind of snowballed over the next couple of days. And the kid came in with his own deck of cards. And then it got to be he wanted to learn and show a learn new magic trick every day. And that made a huge difference for this child. Um, uh, because I have to give you a different one. Uh, but, but that he, he just, he started working. And it meant a lot for this child. And I, and I asked Matt, I said, how is he in class now? I said, he's doing great. You know, he still is him. He still is him and he still wants to talk all the time like you, Brad. But he's having a great time um, and he's paying attention because he found something that he can do and he doesn't feel threatened by it and he wants to keep working hard on it. Well, I remember one uh, student, it was a male student, uh, probably about the same age, seventh or eighth grade. And um, he had a lot of um, emotional issues. And um, not only did you teach him magic, but he later became sort of the prize winner in some sort of contest at his oh. school and then showed up, showed up and became, uh, you know, became the, the person at his public elementary school or public middle school. I can't remember which, um, probably public middle school that became the champion. That was huge. That was massive. And we worked a whole bunch with him and that was a real big gain for him and really helped. It made his mother feel a whole lot better about what he was doing as well. Um, it gave him, something to hold on to and something to practice and something to ex to excel at. Uh, another kid. Ah, can't tell you his name. It's a kid who came in. He was in the afternoon with all the Pueyo kids. He was struggling. He didn't really, really having a hard time and wasn't paying attention. And uh, he ended up becoming, we kept brought him back when he was in eighth grade to be a TA. He came in and TA'd for us, and eventually he was a Punahou student by then, and it wasn't a Pueo student, a Punahou student. He got asked to leave the school. 
not by you or me or Pueo, wasn't a Pueo thing. Um, he took his magic after he left and he was having nothing but troubles. He was lying, he was stealing, he was cheating, he was mouthy, rude to people. Uh, there was no way they could keep him in the school. Fast forward, he became an Eagle Scout a month ago. He worked for us for three weeks this summer as a full-born TA, full-blown TA, doing the magic, teaching the magic, great attitude, working with all the rest of the kids, using all the stuff he had learned all the way along the line, but except now he was in charge and putting it together. And when I tell you he was good, it wasn't just good. It was like having another teacher in the room. He still is only going to be a senior. But the magic, and he told me, Uncle Brad, you gave me stuff to hold on to. And I'm still doing it now. And it's not so much the magic. It's how to be a person and how to make good decisions and how to actually try your best. That is um, the true merit of you know what you're doing and also doing it um, you know system-wide um, in the DOE with at least two schools. And mm -hmm. um, and of course, as we mentioned, you know, scores have gone up. So this is you know, this is a positive and wonderful story about magic um, in the Department of Education. Now, Brad, we are nearing our or Dr. Corbin, we are nearing our our completion time. But I would like you, if you would not mind, and I don't want to give you any ways any secrets, but I'd like you to perform a magic trip trick as we um, come to the conclusion of our show. This is good because the black is really good. It'll show this really well. I love doing this piece of magic because I can teach this to tiny kids. I can teach it to four-year-olds. Are they really good at it right away? Absolutely not. No. Do they get better at it really quickly? Uh-huh. Yes, they do. And they love this. And I'll show them this and I'll say, look, this is a beautiful little rubber band. It's a little hair tie like this. He's little in orange. So we call him little orangey. Now watch really carefully. I put little orangey right here so you can see him. You see him right there? I better take the ring off here because it makes it a little bit easier to see. He lives uptown. He doesn't live downtown down here. He lives uptown. But every once in a while, he wants to go visit his friend. And I have to help him. I give him the magic word like this. And I say, one, two, you want to go downtown? Yes. Oh, look, he talks. On the count of three, one, two, three, go. And he jumps down just like that. Okay. Now he has, to, no, 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 he doesn't have to stay down there. He wants to go back home. I just have to help him go back. And I say, one, two, three, jump. And he jumps back. Now, what's cool about this is he has a friend who lives downtown. And his friend who lives downtown is a little in pink. So we call him, right, little pinky. Okay, little Pinky, he wants to go visit him. So what he'll do is he'll go down like this, one, two, three, and say, okay, I want to go visit him. And I'll say, you want to visit him? Yep, we have to say weepaw, one, two, three, snap, weepaw, like that. And he visits him just like that, right? And now it's time for little Orangey to go back. So I say, one, two, three, and wait. And he goes back. That's really good. And sometimes little Pinky follows him just like that. And sometimes they get mixed up. Sometimes little Orangey forgets where he lives and he goes back downtown like that. Now they have a friend who is little and, well, let's use the blue one, little and blue. So we call him, no, not little bluey, we call him Frank. <laughs> so Frank goes like this and Frank goes, I want to make it so those guys can't go anywhere. I'm going to lock them in just like that. So they can't go, look, they're locked in. They can't go anywhere. And little, little Orangey um, and little Pinky say, well, here's here's Pinky right here. Watch, because Pinky jumps over just like that. And Orangey jumps over like that. And they've actually switched places. And he goes, wait a minute. They're not supposed to be, they're locked in. How do they do that? Well, and little boy goes, Dr. K, help me with one thing, will you? I want to trap them. They always leave me out. Is there a way that I can actually trap them? Uh, yeah, there is. I'll give you a little bit of magic one time. Okay, one time. So little Pinky and little Orangey, you're going to be able to trap them if you watch very carefully right now and you say Weepa on three with me. One, two, three. Weepa. And if you look very carefully.
Definitely. Little oh, orange wow. and little pinky. Put your finger in there and hold. Wait a minute. Are they linked on there? They really are. They're linked on there. How do you get them off of there if they're linked? There's only one way. You have to take little bluey off of the fingers, and you see that they're really linked on there, and then you can get them off. And that's the story of little orangey Anthony and his friends. That's the jumping rubber band. That is just marvelous, uh, Dr. Kerwin, and it's good to end there. But I also, before we end, I wanted to say, because of this wonderful magic trip, uh, tricks, the magic tricks that you have performed, um, that, you know, also between, you know, your magic company and your reading company, you have employed many, many um, people who have risen not only in the magic world, but the reading world and in the public and um, private worlds as educational um, people and who have taken top positions. I'm thinking of one now that's a, a principal. Um, and, you know, this is also to your credit that you've given people a start and you did this in your position when you were um, basically in charge of summer school at Punahou, but you did this through the reading company and you also did this through your magic company. So Dr. Brad Kerwin, we're grateful for you to have participated um, in this program, uh, Journey, Journeys of the Mind. And um, it's nice to know that the homeboy from Southern California who grew up among champion surfers and later became um, a, a student at UCLA and University of Hawaii has done good in Hawaii for all and especially our keiki. Thank you, pal. So Journeys of the Mind with Dr. Brad Kerwin and a hui ho.